Welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs with General Disturbance. This is a replay I didn't expect to make today, uh, but it's mainly because this is Talon 1958 and he's in the Hummel, the tier 6 German SPG on the North Spawn of Serene Coast. And we've got those sounds, so I'm going to quickly run that through again because Wargaming won't fix their program. That's better. Now we've got the engine noises. Game on. Well, yes, Talon's got two marks of excellence on the barrel of his Hummel. And he's got the shotgun, the stock gun, because, of course, as you know, that is the gun that actually, the howitzer, that actually has a better accuracy as well as a better fire rate than the top gun and enables you to shoot at uh, enemy tanks very accurately with a higher trajectory. The, the stock the top gun is very useful for shooting over the entire range of the battlefield but it's got a very low trajectory which means sometimes it gets obstructed by rocks and it's also got a very long reload. Okay he's got his first shot on the enemy off. There is another advantage actually to having the stock gun. You get more ammo! You get 27 rounds with the smaller stock gun, but so you only get 18 with the, uh, the top gun. He got seven hit points there off the M6. He didn't aim far enough forward to actually get more damage. If he, did, he, he needed to lead the target a bit more if he was going to get one on target. Uh, he actually splashed the M6 on that one, but this DK is well within range, and that's... It was a direct hit on target. Okay, over on the west side of the battlefield, the mediums have turned up on that corner. They normally do. And oh, this cheeky Type 58, the uh, Chinese version of the T-34s, decided that he can sneak in. He's actually killed our Panther, but yeah, <laughs> Talon's killed him. That's a nice bit of revenge there. Enemy T-29 moving towards our guys. He's going to arrive at the corner very shortly. Oh, Talon's found another target. Now, as, as I keep preaching to others, if you're in an RC, maximise your output. The moment you're loaded, find another target to hit. The, the more targets you hit, the more chances you've got of getting a Confederate medal. So even if you do lose the team, or rather if your team loses, because most RT players don't lose for their team, they maximise their damage and they come out of the battle very well, but it's the rest of the team that tends to fail them sometimes. But even if you do lose, you could get a Confederate medal and that will boost your earnings through Courageous Resistance. Okay, T29 got through the pass and there's only a Cromwell blocking him now. But Talon's going to fire around him. Oh, he hit the top of that rock. It wasn't fully dialed in when he actually fired. And he's going to have to change position now because that T-29 is getting dangerously close to him. So best to retreat and keep fighting. If he'd stayed where he was, the T-29 would have taken him out. He's gone in amongst the trees. I don't think it really matters too much if you knock trees down if you're in an emergency. Plus, of course, if they can be used as cover. So long as it's not too obvious to the enemy that a tree's been knocked down because something is hiding behind it. Okay, he's trying to get a shot at the T29. Rounds out. That's his best guess. And I'd say that was pretty close. And yes, it was because the stun on the T29. So it did work. Can't hit the T-37, but he can certainly hit that ARL-44, and he's about to get a nasty reminder that he's way too close, and he's not taking precautions. Rounds out. Direct hit, 120. Yes, if you're an RT, or if you're a tank driver, rather, uh, you need to keep moving, because if there's RT in the game, there's a pretty good chance that they're going to be zeroing in on the tank that's not moving. That's the one to go for. The one that sits there like a... and lets you dial in on them to get a direct hit. Of course, RT players are selective though. They will actually go for the tank that represents either the best chance of getting hit points or the one that's threatening his teammates uh, more than others. So if one particular tank has got a 
an auto loader and is blasting away at uh, our teammates, uh, a one quick shot might be uh, all that's needed to actually put that guy off. And, oh, that was good! Right next door to the IS-2, took him out. Now these guys are getting close to Talon, but he's got the trees for cover at the moment. That's out of range, that enemy RT. That was, um, just looking at the list, actually, he just got killed, that RT. We're going for the ARL 44. He's backing up. Talon dives in and direct hit. So again, he's maximizing his output. Keep finding new targets to fire at. That SU-152 is getting rather close, but the church is in the way at the moment, so we can't get a shot on him. But he can get a shot on this T-29. He's dialing in. He's loaded. Work out where he's going. That's it. Rounds out. Direct hit! And it looked like it hit the engine deck, but it did track him, and he burned his repair kit straight away to get moving again. So we know that the next time we hit him, he's not going to be moving for a while, because he's going to be stuck there. Okay, stop for a second to take a shot. Okay, ready? Ready? Bounce out. Yup, direct hit, but it didn't track him. Okay, the RL 44 has decided to retreat because I think all those arty rounds hitting him has really put him off. Talon's not loaded yet. So Talon's reload time, 2450. Oh! He did get a hit on that AMX-12 ton, but it was the T25 AT that took the kill that uh, ended his game. Standard reload time is 25.31 seconds. Talon's got 20.50. So, yes, he has reduced by 5 seconds the time it takes to well, go. That must have been close, but unfortunately trajectory on that particular rock is such that if somebody hides directly behind it, they can't be hit. So he's changing position again to try and get a better angle on the enemy. That T-29 is getting closer and closer to death. He's running out of hit points. Tans lining up a shot ahead of the target. Looks good. He left it a bit late. Only 63 hit points to splash. It's difficult to actually say this is how you do, how you lead a target. You have to learn by experience exactly how far ahead of a target you have to fire. And most people get it fairly quickly in the game. I remember firing from one side of a battlefield right to the other side of the battlefield, hitting an enemy light tank that was going at full speed and watching that thing skid to a halt when it blew up. It takes a lot of uh, lead on the target when that happens. Oh, we got a direct hit! There was an enemy tank behind the rock, a Wizzy 131 GFT or another tank destroyer. I think that was the uh, Stuart Mill. And he hit one of them. Direct hit. Guy was hiding behind the rock. Okay. Well, there's the Wizzy 131, so he must have hit the Stuart Mill. The Thunderbolt is an AFK. Rounds out. He did make a mistake there. Actually, he did get the kill, but he actually looked away after he fired, and we didn't get to see the kill on the Thunderbolt. And I always say to people, don't do that, because you might need to know what actually happened if you hit the target or not. The Wizzy 131's running away. He fired a bit of a snapshot there. And it hit the rock face. There's the story mill that he hit. Oh, you can see he's lost 24% of his health in that shot from Talon. Okay, go for it. Take him out. The T25 AT is going in for the kill shot. And he shoots him in the ass. Okay, Wizzy 131 GFT. Last enemy. Again, he looked away. Shouldn't do that. If you aren't going to move, um, just press the 
the uh, W key as soon as you were uh, fired. But watch what happens to the shell. It's so important. I know people say, oh, I, I only move because I need to avoid counter battery, but you can still look at the target and they have killed the Wizzy and that's a victory. Well, that was a particularly busy game for Talon 1958 in the Hummel. He managed to get a first class tanker in that one from hitting so many of the enemy. A bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got eight. And he got a confederate as well because he hit more of the enemy than anyone else on, my, on his team. At least six tanks subsequently taken out by other teammates. And as I said, just keep pummeling those enemy tanks and medals will come to you. They normally do uh, for RT who are very, very active. His win eight from this battle was 2,636. And I can tell you, yes, he does win the weekend lion. And in fact, actually, Angelina said that Talon needs it because, of course, he's being very, very tired after chasing after Remy all the time. But in actual fact, yes, he does win the weekend lion anyway because both of them have got first class tankers. Both of them have managed to get Confederate with their first class tankers and a bruiser medal. But Talon managed to get the higher win eight on his game and he got a, that's a Unicum level all on the border between Unicum and Super Unicum st standard for damage. Let's have a look at team score. Well, we can see that he was the third highest damage in the game on this one because the high scorer was the Stura Mill on Talon's team who managed to get a high caliber for 3,164 hit points. The second highest damage was the T25 AT, 2,230 hit points. And the third highest damage went to Talon with his Confederate and 1,432 hit points. When it came to kills, he shared second spot because the T25 AT managed to get four kills. Three kills went to the Stewie Mill and to Talon. And two kills to the T34 85 on his own team. And the T29 was the highest scorer on the enemy team. When it came to base XP, it was the Suru Mill who did the best. 1,021 went to him, 942 went to the T25 AT, 774 to the T34 85, and then we've got Talon with 762, only a short distance behind. He fired 19 rounds in that game, got 8 direct hits but no penetrations, 17 splash as well. 1,432 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. He damaged 10 of the enemy, killed 3, so there's a 7 difference. That's where he earned the Confederate. 216 hit points of stun assist of 14 stuns. He earned 35,216 credits from the game, but he got hold the ops of 147,326 credits and a total of 182, 542 credits overall. And after ammunition resupply, and it's very cheap ammo, 1,172,947 1, credits profit. That's a massive score for a tier 6 arty. 1,143 XP times 2 for the first victory. Took away 2,286 experience points altogether. He says, is, this, is it enough for a win? Yes, it is. And Angeline has already conceded because I'm not sure she's going to be able to get another replay in in the time so that she can steal it away from him. But uh, yes, it looks like Talon is going to be having a nice lie-in tomorrow morning, whereas Angelina is going to have to get up and chase after Remy. I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.